Okay, I'm taking a break for a second. I've been, let me see how dirty I am. It's everywhere. <laughs> um, I'm taking a quick break from all the cobbing. And um, so I just quickly show you kind of where we're at on the RMH. Now, um, my husband, who loves to work with metal, he's a knife maker. And so he loves to work with any, any kind of metal. He ended up building me a box right here at kind of the, where, where the pipes are supposed to do a 180 and go back, um, on a suggestion from one of the geniuses at permies.com. And we really liked the suggestion. So he built me this box and got the duct work into it. And you can see up here behind me, we've got the duct work running out of like where the manifold there is. It's not finished, but it's gonna be. And coming across and down the bench and then back the other direction and up and out and that's where it will vent to he also did a little work around on the exit vent and i'll show you that later but what now what i'm working on um we've been i've been cobbing <laughs> and my husband's in there taking care of the granddaughters right now for a little bit so i've got a little bit of time to come down here and play in the mud um we earlier uh, my husband and I came out, he helped me <laughs> finish digging out the hugelkultur trench. And because we had to get to the clay that was underneath it. And so we got one um, load in here. I've already made one batch of cob from that. I can get one more batch of cob out of what we dug up and continue. But I wanted to show you what I'm in the process of doing right now. Okay, so this is like the end run of my um warming bench and what i've got i've already i'm going to show you this i have already cobbed and underneath and i've got rocks actually underneath there as well but i've cobbed underneath all the pipes and i have been working recently on going putting the cob and some rocks behind in between and all that. Um, the whole idea of this heater is that the when I burn the fire, it will it burns like in a specific way. And I'm going to show you guys that. But the all this combustion happens where the the combustion chamber is, and it's like superheated air. Well, then it escapes down the pipe that comes out of the manifold and into these pipes. Well, these pipes will be completely covered in cob and rock and that kind of thing, thermal mass. It will hold on to the heat. So if I come out here at night and um, burn the fire, it will heat up all of the thermal mass. And then e even after the fire goes out while I'm sleeping, <laughs> the, the mass will actually still continue to emit the heat keeping my delicate little plants <laughs> um, warm, above freezing. That's my goal. I just want them to be above freezing when we have a freeze. And which obviously in Southern Oklahoma, we don't have hard winters, but we do have crazy late freezes and they tend to ruin some of my plants. So I'm trying to work around that. And that's what, that's what the, um, the situation is right now. I'm gonna continue this cobbing and then, let me show you this. Okay, so, let's see if I can hold on to this. Okay, so right there, <laughs> it, that's where we put the wood in, okay? That's where the, you just stand sticks up in it and you burn your wood right there, dried wood. It burns through the tunnel in between there it burns sideways, okay, because of the draft that's being caused. So you start the fire in that little hole, it burns sideways and it goes up. There's gonna be a chimney right there in the center of that. And um, then there will be a barrel over it. So there will be space around the barrel. The superheated air goes up the chimney and it bounces off that barrel and it starts swirling in all that space around there 
causing more combustion. It like gets super, super hot. And then that heat will escape down here through my ductwork. Now, I've got a lot left to do, but honestly, it's only been a few days and I've been able to accomplish this so far. So I feel pretty good about my chances of getting it done fairly quickly. Um, the weather forecast for the next 10 days in Southern Oklahoma does not show a freeze. We'll see because you know, wait five minutes and the forecast changes. But I will show you where I'm at when I get a little bit further. My plan is to add a bunch more rock to the bench. And this is this will actually end up, you can warm your butt there if you're cold. <laughs> or I'm going to have my seedling trays sitting on there. And their little roots can warm. So I'm excited about getting it done. And I will show you. This one has to come up to right there. So it'll be a little bit before I get that one done. Okay, I wanted to show you real quick what I'm doing here. Um, I'm actually getting close to being done with the cobbing. I'm, I've got, got a little ways. I'm hoping to be able to finish by tonight, but I wanted to show you the cob mixing. Now I layered in, the, I'm doing the outer edge right now. It's the structural cob, the outer portions of it. And so it's um, got a lot more straw in it, kind of acts like rebar and holds it together. But I've layered that stuff in on this tarp in this little hollow that I've got um, right here in front of this <laughs> big shelf. And I am stomping it. Um, I've got clay, sand, straw, and a little bit of water, and um, i am just literally got my galoshes on, my muck boots, and I am just literally stomping it, and then occasionally I reach out to the tarp, pull it around, kind of like stirring it, and then I just continue the stomping process. By this evening, I will be muddy from head to toe, <laughs> just completely covered in this stuff. But hopefully, the cobbing will be done. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to show you real quick. I'm almost done cobbing and rocking the bench. And I wanted to show you um, what it is that I'm doing. I've got my cob stomped up <laughs> and um, I'm fixing to take some put it over here and try to get the last couple of rocks in so I was going to show you that process okay so you notice it's got quite a bit of straw in it this is like rebar it kind of helps hold everything together and I'm going to kind of put it in here squish it up where the other stones are so that there will be kind of a block between them, kind of like grout. These, these, these gloves are pretty good for the main part of the cob, but not great for the finish cob. So I'll have to switch up to my husband's tattooing gloves in a little bit. But let me get some more. This is probably the hardest part, is going over there, getting down on my knees, picking up this heavy freaking cob, <laughs> and then carrying it over here every time. But that's what gives me those gardening guns. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to fit this one rock in, see what happens.
try to kind of build it up a little bit and then squish it into place. It's kind of a thick area right here where we're going over the corner. My duct work obviously is in between there and I just wanted to have kind of a, a rock surface. We pulled these stones up from a sidewalk that were taken down out front. So easy to use. Now what I'll do is I'll come in with some more of it, a little heavier, and squish it up underneath there because it needs a little extra out front. And I'll handle that. Then I've just got one more spot here that I've got to build up over this. This is one of the clean outs. And um, so I've got to leave the front exposed, but I'll build up around it and get another rock in there. And then my rocks, yep, my rocks will be done. Then it's time to move on to um, cobbing around the, the barrel over here in the combustion area and all that. So hopefully I will be done today. 